from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, May 20th. Okay, so we have a very interesting day on our hands. I know I've been saying that for the last couple of days, but there's been a lot of truth to that. We've been having some very strange energetic days, especially wrapping up Taurus season. Now here today is going to be labeled a transitional day for a couple of reasons. First of all, the moon in this Libra energy, of course, went void, of course, here yesterday, and we're still in this void until 6.35. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today when the moon is going to lock into Scorpio energy. So let's talk about that first. The transition from Libra energy to Scorpio energy is always very intense. We're moving out of the light, fluffy vibe of Libra energy, trying to keep in the shallow end of our thoughts, of our emotions in order to find peace and harmony and balance, not only within, but in our relationship dynamics as well. We dive into deep, intense emotions in Scorpio energy. It is where we do shadow work. It is where we put the detective hat on, where we are going on an exploration for hidden truths, for hidden details. We need to piece things together in order to understand where the change, where the transformation has to happen within us first and foremost. Now, as if that wasn't enough of a transition, we are also transiting from Taurus season to Gemini season, and we are watching the sun wrap up the final degrees here in this Taurus energy before diving into Gemini energy. And all of this is happening while the moon is void. So things are shaky. Things are unstable. Things are uncertain. We're going to have this really weird push and pull of energies, this ebb and flow of energies. We're moving out of a fixed earth sign, Taurus energy, stabilizing energy, grounded, anchored, so much so that we kind of feel like we haven't been productive at all, into a mutable air sign where change, rapid processing, lots of options, choices, decisions will need to be made. We're moving out of a very slow time warp in Taurus energy into an accelerated time warp in Gemini energy. So, you know, Mondays are ruled over by the moon. The moon is not stable here today. The moon is in transition. The sun is in transition. Therefore, we are in transition as well. The moon being our emotional realm, our intuitions, and of course, our, I'm going to say, inner realm of processing versus the sun, which is shining a bright light in order for us to step into new life force energy. The sun is transiting from an earth sign to an air sign. So yes, there's going to be a major jump in energies back and forth, up and down until we find a sweet spot, which technically speaking, we're not going to find here for a couple of days because we're not going to have very much time to acclimate to Gemini energy before we have wham, bam, thank you, ma'ams, all kinds of energy shifts and adjustments throughout the course of this week. If you have to go ahead, take a listen to the Ascension forecast for this week. I'm going to recommend that you do that, that you keep coming back to it, because not only does it give you the lay of the land on what you can expect for this week ahead, but you're going to understand where the energy is going to manifest in your physical body, in your physical form. Besides that, we have Gemini season astro forecast out there for your listening pleasure. We also have the Gemini season e-guide for your downloading pleasure. And of course, if you're over on my Patreon, those particular aspects are going to be available to you. And if you're not, you really should consider jumping over there. We have a lot going on. And of course, it's going to be a little bit of an emotionally chaotic day with the moon being void, with the sun transitioning from one very dramatic energy to the other. And of course, as soon as we dive into Gemini energy, polarization is going to happen right away, meaning we are going to be faced with an inner power struggle, our heart versus our head, our ego versus our higher self, our old version, version of self versus the new version of self. Again, the extremes need to be amplified in order for us to find a new common ground, a compromise by the end of Gemini season. So there's a lot going on. We have 13 different aspects taking place here today, which is relatively a busy day in the cosmos. 10 of those aspects are going to involve the moon. So the moon in this Libra energy, but void, of course, is going to make an opposition 
a direct confrontation with Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries energy. Libra energy, Aries energy sits across from each other in the zodiac wheel. Emotionally speaking, we're trying to find balance, peace, harmony, not only in our emotion, not only in between our heart and our head, but in our physical circumstances, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. Now, Chiron being the wounded healer, he's being aspected in not such a nice way, which means that we're going to be focused more on the wounds than we are on the healing. And right now we're questioning this new version of self. We're questioning our own wants, needs, and desires. Why? Because the Libra energy has us more concerned with being on the same page with other people, with doing what everybody else wants to do or wants us to do. And we're abandoning this new version of self with these new wants, needs, and desires, because of course, that would mean that we'd have to break away from certain certain relationship dynamics and God forbid be the bad guy, God forbid create a little bit of disappointment in other people when we stand up for ourselves and we actually declare that we have to go on a solo mission and fulfill certain wants, needs and desires that again, our higher self is now calling us to pursue. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in these final degrees of Taurus energy. This is definitely going to give us a major shift in moon and attitude, especially coming out of that opposition with Chiron, where again, we're getting triggered and activated to see where it is that we're giving too much of our energy away, not kind of reserving enough energy for ourselves. The moon and Jupiter puts us in a little bit more of an optimistic state in a confident state where we're understanding what we have to be doing, not only for ourselves, but to honor the commitments and obligations that we've made with other people. We're thinking about our options and opportunities to rearrange, to restructure, to redesign our physical realm, to allow the time, energy, and space, not only for us to continue doing what we're doing for the team, for the partnership, for the group, but to also make time and space for us to have a solo quest, our own individual mission, let's say. So this is definitely going to magnify, again, where it is that we're picking ourselves up, we're drying ourselves off, we're putting ourselves in a better mood and a better attitude to kind of see where it is in our physical realms that we can make some changes and transformations that give us a little bit more breathing room, so to speak. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, also in this Taurus energy. So this particular interaction is going to create confusion. It's going to highlight indecision, uncertainty. Again, the moon is still void. Um, it is going to kind of close our minds off and it's going to shut down the openness, the willingness, the risk type of energy that we've been sitting in for the last couple of days. We've been building in momentum, trying to put ourselves out there, trying to declare what it is that we want, need, and desire for ourselves. We've been trying to connect the dots. We've been trying to adopt new ways of doing things in order to get a different result. But of course, the moon being in this Libra and energy, people pleasing and insecure and uncertain, we're tapping into those not so nice qualities with this particular interaction and we're creating more anxiety, more confusion than there actually needs to be. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with the sun, shining a very bright light in the final degrees of this Taurus energy. And again, anytime that the moon and the sun come together in any kind of way, there's going to be a new aha moment, especially where emotional wants, needs, and desires are concerned. Now, the interesting vibe here is that Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, she rules over Libra energy. She rules over Taurus energy. So there is an epiphany kind of coming to the forefront here on what it is that we need to be doing for ourselves, what it is that we need to be doing for other people. Again, it's almost like compartmentalizing our energy, time and attention enough for the honoring the commitments that we've made to other people and also reserving enough time, energy and attention for us to pursue our own path. Of course, the sun shining a bright light on what we have to build, what we have to create, what we have to bring to life in order to feel happiness and joy and safety, security and stability. And of course, the moon, emotionally speaking, in this Libra and energy just needs to get our heart and head in alignment so that we can take action and make moves to make the changes that the sun is currently illuminating for us. The moon is then going to make a very positive interaction with Saturn. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibility, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. We have Mr. Karma himself in this Pisces energy attempting to wrap up a 30-year cycle, trying to deconstruct.
deconstruct the old false belief system, the limiting belief system, trying to show us where it is that we have to align with the higher self to grasp a vision, a goal, a dream, and where we have to start building the key cornerstone foundation of what it is that we want to be building, want to be creating, want to be pursuing. Now, normally, if this was a harsh aspect, we would be getting a very serious reality check at this particular point in time. But lucky for us, this is a positive interaction, which means that we're just starting to understand at this point where it is that a major shift, a major change, especially in the roles and responsibilities that we have in our lives and in other people's lives, where those are now coming open, I'm going to say, full wide open for us to step into. We've been resisting these changes. We've been hesitant to make any kind of changes. We've been kind of resisting and procrastinating on bossing up and seeing what it is that we have to kind of remove out of our lives in order to create the time, the energy, the space to build something new. So this is definitely going to put us in a more realistic emotional space in order to understand where it is that we've kind of allowed our headspace to take the best part of us and create some anxiety and where we're kind of losing our stability to the back and forth of the scales that the Libra energy needs us to balance out. We're kind of bringing things into focus and we're kind of more concentrated on where we need to stabilize in our emotional realm so that, again, the scales aren't going back and forth and up and down and all over the place. That stabilizing energy is going to reveal to us where it is that we got to boss up, where it is that we have to kind of calm the anxiety in our mental plane down, where it is that we have to kind of stabilize our emotional realm so that essentially we can get to building. We need to make some progress here. And so this particular interaction although, you know, not as harsh as it could be, still kind of bringing us down a couple of pegs in order for us to be logical and practical with our thoughts, with our emotions, and what it is now that we have to get planning towards. The sun in the final degrees of Taurus energy is going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict with the North Node in Aries energy. So first of all, semi-square does not feel good. It's not as big, not as harsh, not as conflicting as a major square. This is only a half square, a semi-square. However, right now, because we're at the final degrees of Taurus energy, it's a critical crisis degree at the 29th degree. It's kind of where the pressure kind of breaks us, if you will. And we know that we're moving out of the Taurus energy, which has been a very slow and steady pace, almost a snail's pace, if you will. We're feeling the jitteriness. We're feeling the anxiousness. We're feeling the, let's call it, energy shifting, preparing us to move into Gemini energy. And so there's a lot of tension. There's a lot of, I'm going to say, pressurized energy coming in at this time because we're not feeling well-equipped and well-prepared to have the universe hit that fast-forward word button. So there's a resistance. Again, fixed earth energy. Are we really surprised? Absolutely not. That north node in Aries energy trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us on the path for us to reach our soul's mission, our soul's purpose, our soul's potential. But a semi-square is not really favorable. So instead of seeing the path forward, instead of seeing our options and opportunities to make any kind of moves, instead of seeing the opportunity for growth and healing and repairment, right now, we're just in a state of paralysis. We're kind of sitting more in fear. We're sitting more in stubbornness. We're sitting more in resistance than we are in willingness. 9 a.m., Eastern Standard Time, the sun is going to shift into the Gemini energy. So again, expect a major, major change in your mood, in your attitude, especially in the way that you're processing the latest information coming at you. Again, listen to the Astro Forecast, download your e-guide. There are a lot of resources out there to kind of paint the picture on what Gemini season is all about. So about an hour and a half later, the moon, still void, still in this Libran energy, going to make a very tough, very harsh aspect with Venus, its ruler. Venus, of course, she just gave up her rulership because we're no longer in Taurus season. Yes, granted, she herself is still in Taurus energy, so she does still have, you know, her power as far as that placement goes. However, 
the moon interacting with Venus right now, we aren't feeling so good. We're not feeling so hot. We're not feeling so stable. We're not feeling so short. We're questioning everything. We're sitting in fears and doubts and insecurities. We're holding on to the past for dear life at this point. We are very consumed with the fact that just a couple of days ago, we were putting ourselves out there. We were bossing up. We were ready to basically declare and ask for the things that we were lacking, especially in relationship dynamics. We were, I'm going to say, more in a position to take a risk and bust out of our comfort zone than we are now. Now we're kind of backpedaling and it really does not feel good. We sit in that energy for a couple of hours and then the sun now in Gemini energy is going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma in Pisces energy. So air energy and water energy is very electric. It's very imaginative, very creative. The sun now shining a bright light in Gemini energy needs us to open up our mind space, needs us to gather information, to explore, to research. We need to go out in the world. We're a little bit more extroverted than we were in Taurus season. Now we need to kind of go out in the world for stimulation. Saturn, on the other hand, again, looking to stabilize in building a new structure, a new foundation towards a goal, a vision, a dream. So now we're kind of hyper focused on the logical, practical side of our intellects, and we are being triggered and activated to really get down to the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty of the information and details that we currently feel that we're lacking in order to make an informed decision on what it is that we want to build, create and bring to life, especially according to the seeds that got planted within us throughout Taurus season. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance and blessings in the Taurus energy. This again is putting I'm going to say a magnification, turning the volume all the way up on our fears, on our doubts, on our insecurities, and mostly because of this moon void in Libra energy, indecision. We are flip-flopping back and forth. Again, the options, the opportunities that we thought we were sure about just a couple of days ago, now we're falling apart. We're questioning everything. Why? Because we're in a new energy that is going to require us to boss up and make some major moves. And we're not feeling so good about that. We're not feeling so sure. We're not feeling so hot. We're not feeling so prepared. So we're backpedaling, trying to justify how great this present moment is, even though we're fully in Delulu land about that, we're trying to convince ourselves to settle. And of course, we will not settle. But at this particular point in time, emotionally speaking, we are not stable. We are not in a good place. We are not even excited about the options and opportunities for growth. We just want to stay the same. The moon then goes ahead, makes a very tough interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, in his place of power in Pisces energy. So again, we have this, I'm going to say, confusion and delusion setting in. We're overwhelmed with thoughts. We're overwhelmed with energies. We're hypersensitive. Our imagination, our intuition comes on full blast with Neptune in Pisces energy. We have a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas, a lot of visions, a lot of goals, but we're so overwhelmed with all of the ups and downs and the in-betweens, the information, the details that we have, the information and details that we don't have, that we're just kind of wanting to curl up in a ball at this point. We don't want to really even take part in reality. There's too much going on inside of us and outside of us, and we can't make any sense of it. Why is that, you may ask? Well, because we're in a transitional phase. Speaking of which, 6.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon finally shifts into Scorpio energy. This is a fixed water sign. So fixed energy is going to help us stabilize. And after, you know, this little shit show of having the moon be void for way too long, we're going to enjoy that stabilizing energy. However, Scorpio energy is intense. It is thick. It is deep. It is complex. And we sit in that for about a half hour and then we have the moon 
now in Scorpio energy, making a very tough interaction with the sun now in Gemini energy. So again, the moon has gone through a very tough transitional phase over the course of the last 24 hours. The sun has gone through a very tough transitional phase over the last 24 hours. These guys are meeting up in a very tough way. We're a little bit jolted. We're a little bit all over the place. We're on guard. We're super defensive. But again, even in a tough interaction, the sun and the moon coming together is giving us an emotional awareness. What the emotional awareness is doing for us right now is emotionally speaking, the moon and Scorpio, we're just kind of guarded. We are trying to stabilize. We're trying to get our bearings. We're trying to understand, again, from a different perspective, what needs to change, what we have to transform. But the sun shining a very bright light in Gemini energy now has our mental plane kind of over-processing, if you will, detaching us from the emotions that the moon in Scorpio needs us to feel. We have to feel it in order to heal it. So this is the disconnect. But out of that disconnect under the pressure of detachment, under the pressure of this particular tension and conflict, there is going to be a major aha moment on what needs to change the most. And the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in the Scorpio energy getting into the boxing ring and fighting out with Pluto. Pluto rules over the Scorpio energy. So anytime we are interacting with the ruler of the energy that the moon is currently in, this is like intense double fold. Now, Pluto, the great transformer himself, he's retrograde taking us on an inner journey in Aquarius energy. So this inner journey is about us illuminating the egoic programming that has us in a conflict within ourselves. There's a very deep power struggle going on within us. Now, whether that is between your heart and your head, between the ego self and the higher self, or the old self versus the new version of self that we're trying to bust out, there's some sort of disconnect there. We are at odds, again, very combative within us. And the Aquarius energy wants to help break us free from this, but we have to become aware of what the problem is in order to actually override it. That Aquarius energy is helping us to act as the observer, removing ourselves pretty much from this inner struggle so that we can observe the parts of self that are going at it. We have to be that third party observer to see the parts of self that are live and well triggered and activated going at each other for dominancy for rulership. And in turn, that Aquarius energy is pushing us into new levels of awareness, new levels of consciousness for us to observe the shadow work that's essentially going on within us. So this is going to be a very not nice vibe. It's very intense. We are semi paranoid. We are very defensive, very guarded. We understand that there are some hidden details, some hidden information that we're really going to have to unearth within ourselves in order to be fully informed on what needs to change, what needs to transform in our soul and in our spirit first and foremost. So this is going to be intense. It's setting us up to really put the squeeze on ourselves, do a deep dive in our psyche, do a deep dive in our emotions, in our intuition, in order to understand where the triggers and activations are coming full circle for us to make a major change, not only in the way that we think and feel, but in the way that we're observing the different parts of self now fighting for control. <laughs>